Chris Beast here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I believe is a mechanic inventor that's largely been forgotten. And I wouldn't even say forgotten by the devs, but more so forgotten by the community. Now, before I really go deeper into this, I do want to say any likes, subs, comments, I appreciate them all. And if you want to talk with me more frequently, um, there are two Discord links in the description that I use both of. One is for Switch players, one is for Xbox players. So let's get into this video. In my opinion, Vigor has a forgotten mechanic. This mechanic is the food system. The food system, or food, can be gathered in rounds, either using bushes, or trash cans, or other things, it can be found in crates, is given as a reward for winning elimination and shootout, and it can also be generated in your shelter by upgrading the box of plants. To understand why something that is so readily available in the game is something I would consider forgotten by the community, we must first remember why it was added. To do that, we must go all the way back to the update it was added in. Point 9. Point 9 is kind of a limbo update. It is in between the update preview and what it held, and the full release and what that held. Point 9 is where many things got changed, including gunplay, a complete progression wipe, and generally the community's attitude towards the game. One of the additions that came with Point 9 was the food system. This was the dev's answer to the overwhelming desire for a stat board at the time as many people were against the stat board due to thinking it would make the game more kill heavy so they decided that we'll add something that can still track progression still track who's the best but isn't based around kills the food system back then was very intense as many people worked very hard gathering food pretty much daily and nightly in order to get to the top of the leaderboard i remember myself and bobo rail working very hard to get up to the top 20 percent top 1%, and then even the top 20 on the leaderboard. These were things we really felt passionate about grinding for because we felt it mattered. So what changed? Well, nothing really changed on the dev side. It was more so community side. After about two to three weeks of grinding, people came across the realization that even if you spent day and night working hard grinding food from encounters, it was nothing compared to the rates you could get from upgrading the rat traps. This realization destroyed the illusion that somehow this was the grand progression system we all wanted. Instead, it just made it a simple battle of who had the highest tier shelter. This took a lot of the allure out of grinding and really made it a system nobody cared about, at least for the time. This would all be changed in update 1.2, also known as the Preppers update. In an attempt to get people once again interested in the food leaderboard, they would finally add a reward to the system. This was a great idea as it once again built hype for this system and it made people care about it again. People were once again grinding food, once again making food maps, and once again uploading videos about how to get food in the fastest ways possible. This golden era of food wouldn't last forever, however, and it was brought down by a number of different reasons. One of the first reasons that this system wouldn't last forever were early dupers. Early dupers who would just boost lobbies to infinity to get really high up loot would do exactly that, then grab tons of food and extract, throwing them hundreds of places above in the leaderboard. This system eventually got so bad that it was believed that most of the top five on the food leaderboard were at least in some way related to a duper. On top of that, the issue of how much each crate should be worth was highly debated for the entirety of its existence. Some would argue that it should be more, so that way higher ranked players actually have to do some work in order to, you know, get the crates, while others would argue it should be less, so that way it's physically possible for low to new players to actually get the rewards. While I don't really have an opinion on this debate, the fact this debate existed would also divide people on whether or not food was important at all. On top of this, Eventually, the stat leaderboard would be added. The stat leaderboard was practically the death blow for food, as with the ability to be able to grind for loot per encounter, airdrops, and kills to show up on a stat leaderboard was something people cared more about than simply donating food. The things that didn't help this is largely the fact that food takes up inventory slots in a normal encounter, inventory slots that could be used for much more useful items in progression. This makes it something that lower-ranked players pretty much don't care about. On top of that, the sheer amounts of food required to get even one crate is absurd and simply isn't worth the time or effort. While there were things that would make food more accessible, such as the ability to get it from things such as elimination and shootout, the small amounts that these two modes give isn't enough to incentivize people to go back into a full food grind. Now, 
With all of the issues on the table, what do I think could be done to fix food? If I'm being fully honest, not much. Food was largely added as a placeholder stat bar, something to add to the game to give a way to rank players, really before the stat system itself was added. However, with the stat system in the game now, there's no reason to grind for food. While the crates are nice and lowering the numbers or making them larger or giving more crates or whatever we decide to change with that isn't going to matter in the long run because ultimately I can get crates at a much faster rate than it takes to grind food. I can get a gold crate in about the same amount of time it takes me to get 10,000 food. Do you have an idea? 10,000 food requires you to win approximately, if you're only playing shootout or elimination, around 100 rounds because each round gives you 100 food or 150 if you really ace. To put that into perspective, in 100 rounds, it's very probable that you would win at least one of them and get a gold airdrop from them. In fact, 100 encounters is, is so much time that it's arguably silly to grind for food in the way that it once was. Now, I don't think food should be removed from the game. I think food is a very interesting system, but it needs to be taken in a new direction. I think things such as a vendor would be interesting. However, the issues of a vendor would have the same issues that the issues that played the charity box. How much would it cost? If it costs too little and makes it a very easy thing for new players, while it would be nice, it would ultimately be broken in the long run by high tier players just spamming their food at it, deconstructing it, and using it to fuel their much more expensive guns. If we make it too expensive, then it's worthless for both sides. No high ranking player is going to spend their time grinding for food to get an item that they could have gotten far faster by grinding normally. And the opposite is true with the low players, as they simply will not be able to get that much food at lower ranks. This dilemma with food is not something I think can be fixed easily, and is part of the reason why I'm not sure what we really should be doing. My thoughts are just that, my thoughts. Whatever you think or believe is totally up to you, and I would love to hear it down in the comments. If you honestly think there is a way we can make food a useful system again, something that people actually care about, I would love to hear it, because I would love to grind food once again. But this has been Christopher Beast, and I do hope to see you guys next time.